reading it to you because I've read your daily dosage of scripture. Um, this woman, um, she, how she knows about Jesus and all that kind of stuff, you know, it's not really clear. It's not really understood. It, God doesn't decide to tell us. But through the story, you can see what this woman really understood. Do you know with a bleeding disease, she was unclean? Okay? Right? Under the law, under the law of Moses, as an unclean person, if she didn't announce her uncleanness and she actually went out and touched people, she could be stoned for her uncleanness. Okay? So see uncleanness and unrighteousness. Okay? I want you to make that parallel. So she's, she has this unclean condition. She could be stoned for touching anyone. But still, she snakes her way through the crowd to come up just behind Jesus to just touch the hem of his garment, the crumbs. Just the hem of his garment. And she knows she's going to be healed. Do you know that she knows in her heart that God provides? If she didn't know that in her heart, if she didn't have the picture of Jehovah Jireh, go with me now. If she didn't have the picture of Jehovah Jireh, she would have never made it past the, pers the first person without being stoned to death. She saw God provides. And she saw that provision in Jesus Christ. So when she came up behind him and touched every single person in the crowd to come up and touch the hem of his garment, she knew that God would not only provide for her healing, but her righteousness. Do you see it? I'm trying to really expand your heart. Because <laughs> when you see that, it's amazing. You see, the provision of God is always there. It always has been there. And it's always been available to us. It's something that He intended all along. And it's the stiff-necked people that we are. We choose the law. We choose our own L for effort instead of His effort. Listen, whenever you're in any given situation, if you're, if you're going this way, and you're saying God provides. Yes, He provides. And you look over and you go, oh, whew, man, I'm not sure. I know he provides. The enemy's on there. Oh, I got stuff. Turn around and look at the cross. Pull out your title deed. Pull out your piece of paper. The evidence of things. Let's see. The title deed. Of things hopefully. that's what faith is go back and look at the Greek of that it says the title deed of things whenever you're in doubt look at the cross it's been done are you with me yes. is anybody so stretched that they just can't take it anymore <laughs> So what does this look like? Practical. We had a, a group this morning with a, with a guy. I really do love this guy. Um, but he said something that was a little... Let's just, let's, let's just say we wouldn't have agreed exactly on the, the, the application. But his, his thought was, hey, there's, a, there's people in a bar and they claim to know Jesus and they actually quote scripture. And my, meanwhile, they're just getting drunk and they're... You know, they're, they're doing what they do when they do when they're in their bar. And, you know, they do bar things. And it's obvious that they need repentance. They have an obedience problem. They're doing wrong instead of doing right. <laughs> I can tell you they don't have an obedience problem. They have a relationship problem. They have an understanding in their mind problem. If I went up to them and I said, what you're doing is wrong, you need to do this instead, don't you see the difference? They go from this dead work to that dead work. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We need to speak God's provision into their life so that they go, wait a second. I am not condemned. It says so in the book. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It says so in the book. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. It says so in the book. 
The enemy has no chance against me, none whatsoever, because it's his provision, not my self-effort. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. I'm down at this uh, pet expo yesterday down in Costa Mesa Fairgrounds, that area. Whoa. Okay. Before I say anything, if, if you get offended, I'm sorry. I apologize ahead of time. I love you all very much. I just want to pour out God's provision. Wow. <laughs> no, I did not get a snake, but they had snakes. Um, so there's a lot of people there that, um, you know, they, their, their life centers around these animals. I mean, it really does. And I love animals. I got a whole zoo in my house. And, but um, but their, their life is dominated by their animals. Did you know there's like shepherd clubs and terrier clubs and, and people travel around in their RVs and go to things and just, you know, da, 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 da. I, just, I had no idea, man. I thought that was NASCAR. So, uh, <laughs> come on, Jeff Gordon. No. That's the greatest commercial I've ever seen, by the way. Um, so that, that whole, the, you know, so I'm, I'm there. I'm like, okay, oh, God, what does Jesus look like here? How do I look like Jesus for you here, right? So for an hour and a half, I'm, I'm looking for opportunity. If you guys don't know me, I, you know, I, <laughs> you know, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be, you know, um, the Todd White kind of guy. You know, I want to pray for people and I want people to get touched by the love of God. And I just want to see him come to come to Christ through the goodness of God through his provision. You know, I just want to do that, right? So I'm looking for opportunity. I'm going, who do we, who, who, do, who gets prayed for? So I'm like, well, there's a lot of people with canes and stuff. And I'll do, just start grabbing them all. Do I get a speaker and go, open your preach? Come on. What is it? And I'm like, Arr. so for an hour and a half, I'm, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I go, whoa, wait a second. What am I doing? There's a whole lot of me in this conversation. So I said, whoa, wait a second. Oh, I know how this works. God, I trust you explicitly. I'm Abraham. I trust you explicitly. You've called me to the mountain, and here I am. And I don't know what you're going to do, but I am here and ready to receive. I'm wearing this shirt yesterday. You guys see my Yay God shirt? Yeah. My Yay God t-shirt? So I'm standing there. I got my shirt on. 30 seconds after I go, God, I completely trust you. An hour and a half. Nothing. 30 seconds after I say, God, I completely trust you. A lady comes up and says, I really like your shirt. Mm. <laughs> right. A minute later, we're over buying these dog beds, right? And this lady comes up who owns the dog bed selling thing. And she says, I like your shirt. Yay, God. High five. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. So we buy the beds and we're there. A minute later, as we're leaving, I say, oh, I should pray to bless this lady. Of course. Yay, God. So I grab a hold of her and give her a great big bear hug and fan. I said, I bless your business in Jesus' name. End of prayer. I walk away, and I'm telling you, at least six, if not eight people all said, look at those dog beds. Where did you get those? Where does that lady work? Where does this thing? I need to know where to go to get one of those. Are you following this? Yay, God. Because I rest in his provision. Isn't that awesome? All right, Becky, you guys can start coming up, I guess. I, I, I want to read. I'm going I'm to tell you, I'm going to challenge you a little bit. What I'm talking about practically is really not hard. And a lot of it comes from, from um, when I say trust him completely as Abraham, pick up your stuff and start walking towards the mountain and then see what God's going to do. But along the way, Remember this, God has already said so much about you. His provision has already been poured out on you in an amazing way. And whenever the enemy comes against you, God, I trust you completely because I already know some stuff you've said about me. He actually said or did all these things about you or, th or through you or for you. He died for you. He redeemed you to his intended. He saved you, washed you. Paid a ransom for you, justified you, just as if you never sinned, restored you, killed you, raised you up, bore you, loves you, likes you. You're the joy of Jesus. You are the passion of Jesus. 
God does not remember your sin. 